Hi guys, this is Dan for EveCopilot.net, and I'm going to do a tutorial today on Evemon. This is about the fifth time I've recorded this, so if it sounds a little rehearsed, that's because it is. So the first thing we're going to do is open up Chrome or Firefox, don't use Internet Explorer, ever, and we're going to go to evemon.battlecleaner.com. From there, you can download the installer file. It's only about 3 or 4 meg, it's a very small install. Once you run through the install, you'll be left with Evemon. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do, it, it may it will run you through a um, a starter process to to add an account to it, but for now I'll just do it this way. And it's going to require an user ID and an API key. There's the link to get the uh, API if you need it. If you just log in there, you'll get the details. Once you log in, this is what you'll get. Limited API and you'll get all the information you need there. So I'm going to copy the user ID and the API key into the uh, character creator. I'm going to go ahead and next and just choose one of my little test characters that I've got here. And I'm going to nip onto the account, excuse me, nip onto the account management and just enable that account quickly. So this is what you're left with now. You've got your character on Evemon and you're ready to sort of start looking at it and seeing what you want to do. So, when we click on the character, the first thing we get is all the skill information, which is every skill the character has and the level that it's currently at. We also have our Q. As you can see now, I'm currently training Sinosaur Field Theory 5. I've got 780 of 1.2 million done. And at the bottom, you can see there's 12 days and 1 hour left. So, it's all very nice and useful. What can we do with this? Well, Evemon can be used to plan in, into the future what ships you're going to want to fly, the modules you're going to want to put on them, and the support skills that you need. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to go through how I plan to fly a new ship. Okay. So for a new player, we will start with, with a frigate for, for PvP. Okay. So if we go into plans, we can then select new. And we're going to name this PvP Frigate. Okay, there we go. Now, this is the Evemon skill planning window. Shift it over here a little bit. And we basically have the plan queue, which is the skills that we plan to train. Then we have a skill browser, which shows us all the skills in the game. If you look at Spaceship Command there, you can see every different ship, everything we're ever going to need to train. We've got our certificates, which we'll come to later, and a ship browser. Now this is where we're going to start in the ship browser. So we're going to turn off everything except Galanti. We're going to look at frigates and standard frigates. Okay. Now for Galanti they've got various different frigates. So we're going to start off with this Atron. Now if you look down into the right hand side here, you can see required skills. Galanti Frigate 2. So we've already got that skill. We're already capable of flying this Atron. So let's change to an Incursus. Just because we can. And as you can see there for this ship, the required skills is Galanti Frigate 3, which will take 7 hours and 19 minutes to train. Okay, so if we want to fly the Incursus, we need to train Galanti Frigate 3. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to add that to our plan with the first with top priority, priority one. Okay? As soon as we've done that, if you look in the plan queue now, you'll see that our first plan skill is Galanti Frigate. So but all that's enabling us to do is literally get in the ship and fly it. Okay, we need to fit the ship and have modules with it as well. So we go back to our ship browser and we're going to use Battle Clinic loadouts. And what this is is lists of fittings that have been submitted to Battle Clinic by other members and then they've been rated. So we're going to organize this by the ratings. So the, the highest rated in, cur in Cursus Fit is this one. And we'll have a quick look at it. We can see it's got one, okay that's an interesting fit. Um, and you've got to be careful with these because this fit here Using a, it's basically using a gun that's a little bit too big for the ship, so it can only fit the one. So for a new player, that's probably not ideal. 
Um, if we have a look at the can fitting, okay. This is a little bit more like it. This is more like a standard how an incursor should be fit. But it's using a lot of Tech 1 modules. There isn't really any. It's only really got the Tech 2 guns. And again, we we just sort of look through. So here's a day one newbie mission runner. And that's all just basic Tech 1 stuff. Uh, the Lancer. More Tech 1. Okay, so this is pretty good. We've got... Basically, this is the same fit. Almost as this, but this one's using Tech 2 modules and Tech 1 guns, and this one is using Tech 2 guns and Tech 1 modules. So we'll do a combination of the both. So if we take this fit, and you can see this takes 6 days and 3 hours to train. So we're going to add that to our plan with a priority of 2, and that's the basic skills that we need but we want to change a couple of things around. So this damage control, I want to use a Tech 2 damage control and I want to use a Tech 2 nanofiber. So I'm going to nip here into the item browser. I'm going to search for damage control and there's the Tech 2 version of the damage control. And I'm going to add that two days of training. I'm going to add that to my plan with priority of two. And then the other one was the nanofiber and there's the nanofiber internal structure. We, that The skill plan that we looked at had the Tech 1, and we're going to train the Tech 2, which only takes an additional hour. Oh, and we don't even need to add that to the plan, because something we're already training is already using that. So for now, that's pretty much the only changes we'll make. These will possibly change the Warp Scrambler and the Stasis Webifier as well. So if we just get the item browser and we look for Warp Scrambler, we'll train, there's two hours additionally to train for the Tech 2, and the Stasis Webifier. There, we'll train that to Tech 2 as well. Okay, so what we now have in our plan queue is the first of all we're training to be able to fly the ship itself, and that will be done in seven hours. And after that, we're training to fly, to, to use all the modules that we're going to fit onto the ship that we're flying. Okay. So what we want to look at next is the certificates. Now, certificates are very useful things. So we'll close that down for now. Um, and, and basically, these certificates are basically support skills. So for every ship that you fly, there's a lot of skills that will help you fly that ship more effectively. Um, and certificates are certainly not the be all and end all but they're a good starting place to see what skills you need to help you fly this ship more efficiently so for example the first one is a core competency basic and you can see here that these are this certificate requires these sub certificates which require these skills okay so you can see energy management energy grid upgrades energy system operation this is all cat related stuff um, under the tanking, you see the set of skills here that are required to earn that certificate and, and all these skills are going to help you fly this ship more effectively. So we're going to see that to get all the certificates recommended to fly this ship is going to take four days. So we're going to add these to our plan with a priority of three. And that's pretty much the process that I go through for every ship that I you know, if, if if someone comes to me and says I want to fly this ship, this is how I get them to do it. Get into Evemon, get the skills you need to fly the ship, get the skills you need to fly the modules, and get the support skills you need to fly the ship properly. So what we get left with after all of this is sixteen skills to train, eleven days worth of training, and a total of one point two million ISK. And that's gonna enable us to fly the ship, the frigate that we want to fly it. It's going to let us fly all the modules that we want to have on the ship, and we're going to have all the certificates that we need. And that's that. So once you've done that, you can then look and go, right, the next skill I need to train is Galanti Frigate 3. At that point, you can then log into the game, set the skill that you want to train, and off you go. Once that finishes, add, you, know, you can queue these up as you start working through them, buying the skill books as you go. Now... The last thing you're going to want to look at before you sort of commit to the final 
um, change is that, for example, small blaster specialization is only being trained to level 1. Now, if you hover over it, you'll see that it gives you a 2% bonus per skill level to the damage of small turrets. Okay, So this first one only takes 25 minutes to train. So if we right click it, we can change its planned skill level. And we can change that down to 2. And you see there? So if we move this up here, you can now see that in 1 hour and 56 minutes, we can get 2% more damage out of the ship. We then look at scout drone operation. That's being trained to 1. So you can see that gives you an increased range of 5,000 meters. Okay, And all these skills here, they're only being trained just a couple of levels up. Targeting there. No, that's going up. Mechanic. And it's worth just having a look through to see if there's any skills that, that are only being... Anything that's... It's, it's very rarely not worth training a skill up to 3. Okay, So propulsion jamming there. We'll change that's being planned to 4. That's good. Afterburner. That's only being planned to 1, so we'll change that to 3, and it'll add that to the bottom. Um, drones, there you go. So drones enables you, f for each drone you launch into space, you need to have a level of drones. So training that to 3 is always going to be a useful thing. Scout drone operation we've already done. We'll change that up as well, because that's going to give us the hover, hover. Yeah, the additional range, and just look through and see if there's anything that's only trained to level one. Rapid firing two, okay, so we'll change that to three. Sharpshooter is only being trained to one. We'll train that to three. Control bursts to three. Afterburners being done. We'll change that. Yep. Drones three, and that, this is these are all the additional skills that we just added on top. So now we've got to a total of sixteen days. But for those additional days, we're getting an extra 20% bonus to the duration of our afterburner, which means it's going to run for longer and use less cap. We can launch more drones into space. We'll be able to shoot an additional 4% you know, faster is 4% damage. Training sharp shooting up to 3 is going to be a, a, enable you to shoot longer. And in short, I think as a general rule, anything that you're training to 1 to fly a ship properly it's worth training to three but once you've gone through all that you now have your final plan and in 16 days from now this character would be capable of flying a properly fitted well support skilled Galanti frigate and then from there you can if you've, you're happy with that plan you're all done you close it down and you can just click on plans and you can see it there and you can go ahead and make as many plans as you want so we could then do another one for PvP cruiser which is the next ship we're going to look at and you can just keep going from there. So there's a brand new plan, you can just start the process again. Have a look at cruisers, standard, under Galanti, and you pick out your ship and you can start all over again. And again if you save that, you now have the two different fits there. Okay, and you can do that for as many ships as you want, train and plan as far into the future as you want to, and it stops. Doing it this way means that you're always skilling towards something. Okay, you, you know where you're heading and you know what you're getting out of your skill training. And then you also know how long it's going to be until you can fly that ship. So we'll call that a day from there. We've gone on for 13 odd minutes now. Um, this is the first tutorial which is going to start leading up to a full fittings um, section that we're going to start to do. I'm going to do a tutorial in the next couple of days about e-fitting tool which is going to teach you how, rather than just using the battle clinic loadouts that you were using before, this is going to teach you how to devise your own fits. And on top of that, once you have the fit that you want, you can then import that into EVEMON and, and then get the skills and the support skills the same way that we've done here, but doing it with our own fits instead of the battle clinic ones. Once we've got that done, we'll then start going into each race and each ship class in a lot of detail, figuring out how to fit the ship, why we fit it the way that we do, so that you guys can then, rather than just using other people's fits, start to use your own. So they'll be coming out in the next couple of days. This is just the first part. So get Evemon, it makes a world of difference to your game. Um, get used to it, have a play with it, and yeah, thanks for listening, and I'll see you again soon.